Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're gonna to have a look at the EOS operating system for an Android device. Now, this operating system is a fork of lineage, which means that it's going to be supported by a massive array of different smartphones. What I did here is I built out a copy of it here on a Nexus 5X because I had a pile of them laying around. Now, they had reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to get a review sample and have a review of it. And I said, well, let me just go ahead and install it. Now, I was first going to actually do a video on installing EOS, but it was so simple, it would have been less than a five minute video. Simply go to their instructions, find your ROM, download it, and follow the instructions on the screen. Five simple steps, and it actually got everything working just fine. Now EOS is trying to tackle the custom ROM problem of having a ROM that is very easy for a basic newbie to begin. Now the positive is, is if you are over in Europe, you can buy several phones with these pre-installed. Here in the States, we can't. But if you do know a tech geek who can flash a ROM on your phone for you, you can get the thing flashed, have them send it back to you, and then you start it up and it's just about as easy as running any Android or Apple phone there is. They put so much into integrating this into their own e-account. Now, the e-account is a Nextcloud server managed by them. For free, you can get a one gigabyte account service set up. You can go ahead and do that. And then what you can do from there is, uh, I believe you can buy more space. I could not find the pricing on that, but I have heard from other reviewers that it is comparable to other accounts, whatever the price would be for more, more storage space. So whatever that, uh, that would be. But out of the box, EOS gives us one of the greatest integrations like, um, like Apple and like Android. Now the other perk of this is if you already have your own custom Nextcloud account, so if you're following the tutorials I have on Nextcloud, you can actually hook up your own Nextcloud account instead of theirs on the EOS account setup. And it integrates everything except for email. It may be possible to configure your Nextcloud to get the email syncing. I was not able to get that to work. And so that is kind of the case. So let's go ahead and have a look at the phone itself and then we'll go ahead and have some concluding remarks. So let's head on over to the phone. All right, so here we are and they themed this out to be pretty much Apple. We have the gestures, the search, the app suggestions. We have over here, we have our search app suggestions. We have widgets, so we have a weather it widget. You can actually add some other widgets to the screen as well. Now, one of the downsides is I can't take an app and move it over onto another screen. You are locked into having the apps here. This is one of the things I don't like about it because on my production phones, I have four browsers installed, some for accessing Tor and some for not accessing Tor, and I really don't want them all sitting on my home screen. So the inability to hide apps from your home screen, to me, is kind of an off-putting thing. But I can understand why they did it. This is basically the way that Apple runs, except for I can't organize my screens. I can move things around, so if I wanna move stuff around, that's no problem with doing that. I just can't go ahead and move things to different, to different screens wherever I, I might want those to be. Now, the widgets, like we said, they have to go on this screen over here where we can add widgets or we can just not use them at all. I also don't like that I can't adjust the size of the icons. I actually have my icons on my production phone uh, small enough that you can fit seven across on a screen for better organization. This one here, it's not bad. It is very Apple-like. If you're looking for something that's just easy and functional without getting lost in any settings, this is actually going to work for you. But again, all apps being on the home screen. Now let's talk about the EOS apps themselves. Some of these are the stock apps. For example, the calculator, the contacts, the files, the gallery, um, and the music. I believe that these are all just the standard lineage apps. The web browser is its own custom deal. The web browser is actually a fork of, uh, that's actually a fork there of uh, Chromium. 
and uh, they have their male application is actually a fork of canine male, which is my favorite male applications. Their calendaring system is actually much better than whatever is on default on Lineage as well. So they're doing some things with that. And the one controversial one is the maps. This, I believe, is the only proprietary app, but they did it because it functions pretty much exactly like Google Maps, but you do actually have an offline map option. I can download the maps. So I've downloaded the maps for Pennsylvania. So if I'm in Pennsylvania, there's no going into data to grabbing maps. And this does handle directions and things way better than anything else that you will find on an Android device in an open source setting. And this is all done because they are using uh, Micro G. If you're unaware of Micro G, this is a system that gives us Google integration without actually syncing things across to a Google account. So it's kind of like start page. It grabs the request, grabs the things from a proxy through Google and sends it back. I'm not testing out any of the Google apps specifically. I've heard that the YouTube app is going to work, but the Gmail app doesn't. I'm not sure why you would need Gmail app because you can check Gmail on Canine Mail, ergo on the built-in app. So that is good. They also, however, though, have open keychain, which is good for uh, doing encryption on your emails and some other security features. Now on the downside of security and privacy is there is no way to lock the bootloader or to verify the signing of the operating system and so that lends itself to be a potential security risk. The other part that is fairly controversial is ADB root because this is actually part of uh, lineage there is actually an ADB root. If you go down into your, uh, into your developer option, and you have to get in there and utilize your passcode. So I like this feature, but if you head on down there and they will have an option of ADB root, so you can do ADB root. The reason I like that is I can push my custom host file without actually rooting the phone. I can turn on developer options, log in with my passcode, which is all, you know, keeping it all secured. I can turn on ADB root, I can push a custom host file, and then I can come back into developer tools, turn that function back off, and now my phone is safe from all of the trackers and things that I've been spending all these, time, all these years trying to build up and figure out where they are. Now let's talk a little bit about the in account integration because the account integration is one of the biggest selling points of this phone. As I said, you can get your free e-account and I signed up for a free e-account just for the purpose of testing and it works very well. Now, what I did here though is instead of using an e-account, you can go in into the e uh, the e um, account setting and instead of using your e-account, you can go down hit specific server and instead log into your own private Nextcloud account. So I've actually logged into my own private Nextcloud account. This allows you to sync the address books application settings, calendars, mail, like I said, does not work. It does sync notes, it does sync pictures and photos, and also music and files and things like that, and it will sync your tasks. It does all this very flawlessly, and it's, uh, it is absolutely one of the nicest applications because to do this on NextCloud on standard stock lineage, that takes a lot of extra steps, a lot of extra apps, and a lot of extra negotiating. But this actually handles everything so perfectly that with that integrated, I can go into contacts, and my contacts are now synced. I can go into the calendar like we already saw, and the calendar events are all synced. And all of the photos, even this video that we're recording now, is going to, when I turn it off, it's going to automatically sync into my cloud so I can just go into NextCloud on my computer and pull this file off of the phone rather than having to plug the phone in. The integration is literally that good. Now, the last controversial app is the Notes app. Now, since I am signed into an e-account, it actually works. This Notes app does not work offline. It has to be synced into an account, but when I first saw it, I was kind of happy because it's actually the NextCloud Notes app. It's not a fork of anything, it's just the NextCloud Notes app. So if you're using an EOS account or your own NextCloud account, this is the exact application that I use to collect all of my various 
uh, various news articles throughout the week. I do that on the phone and then I can edit the, the link on the computer on Nextcloud. So if you are not syncing an account, the notes application is going to be worthless for you. If you are using either an e-account or your Nextcloud account, that is going to work. So that is an advantage and that is a disadvantage just depending on your take. And the last one we're going to look at is the App Store. This is another kind of controversial one. The App Store here is designed to work and look and function very much like the iOS Store. Each application will give us a privacy score. So here VLC gets a privacy score of 6 out of 10. They're using this based on the number of trackers, the number of permissions. You can see there's no trackers, but it does require a lot of permissions. That's one of the things that, that they are looking at. All right, we also have things, but, but they're kind of a little odd, like you know, no information on Nextcloud. Here's Canon Mail is also getting a six out of 10. And I actually found some interesting things like you can actually search for Chrome and let's just do Chrome Beta here. Chrome Beta is also getting a 6 out of 10. But if we search out something like uh, Firefox Clar or uh, it's called uh, Firefox um, Focus. So Firefox Focus and look at this. This one actually scores 4 out of 10. Which is, by the way, an infinitely more secure and private type system. Why? Because it does not actually have a lot of the other things. I think what knocks it down though is Mozilla's telemetry, which you can turn off. Nevertheless, Firefox Focus is going to be one of your more private ones. Now, the biggest controversy of this app store is, well, it seems to work very well. It's questionable where the apps are coming from. So we don't necessarily have the verification that we have in FDroid, for example. So if I were using this phone, I would recommend you take this app store off and probably put FDroid on because it's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit better. Now, the downside, of course, on FDroid is it does not contain a lot of the apps that in uh, that will include your Google's Play services there is another one I think it's Aurora is another app store that you can add for that type of fun uh, functionality though so the app store is a little bit controversial uh, just because of the sourcing you're not completely sure where you can trust it or where they're coming from but nevertheless they have done a pretty good job if it were curated and it probably is and they're taking the APKs, verifying them, vetting them, and then putting them in their custom store. I'd believe it a little bit better, but still I'd like to see a little bit more verification on that. So let's move on and talk about the final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts here. First, this phone does get you a lot better privacy than stock Apple or stock Android. And it's gonna be a lot easier to configure and set up than a standard lineage. And it's going to function better than a Graphene OS, which is probably the best balance between privacy and security. So there is a use case for it. The Nextcloud EOS integration is absolutely stellar. That in and of itself is a great functionality if you're looking to utilize either a privacy focused company. But I will warn you that the way Nextcloud works, while it is a very good and a very secure system, the administrator for the Nextcloud account, which in this case would be EOS, can access your files. The question is, do they? They say they're not selling their data, they say they're not passing it on, but they would be open to a law enforcement request versus if you're hosting your own Nextcloud instance and utilizing that instead, now they have to do all of that data collection directly through you. It is better privacy than stock Android and Apple. As I said, it's not going to have the security of those, however, because you can't lock the bootloader and you can't get the signing on the operating system. I personally don't let that bother me. Lineage has the same problem. And usually that's only a big issue in the case where somebody gains access to your device. So I'm not as concerned about that one as I am the privacy for me and that's why I use what I use. Now, the option for modding your host file is a plus. Some people, as I said, see that as a negative. I absolutely disagree. You need your passcode to get into it. You would need physical access to the device, and that allows you to push very privacy-focused 
host files on your system. You're not getting that on some of the operating systems which have the quote better uh, security because you're sacrificing some of the privacy because there's all these web trackers following us around and I have blocked those in my host file. I absolutely love the Nextcloud integration, way better and easier to set up. I'm able to sync everything to Nextcloud here without actually having to install the Nextcloud app, without having to install uh, WebDAV and a few other applications that need that. All that's kind of taken care of in the EOS application in and of itself. Now on the downside, I do hate the UI and the lack of overall control. I like my Resurrection OS, different mod that I have, which is absolute control over everything. And it's unspeakable the things that you can customize on that phone there, way better than Lineage, uh, which you can get lost in the settings, unfortunately. But nevertheless, I spent the time, I spent an hour getting it perfect. Now I love the build. I don't mess with it, but it's a much nicer phone build than, than some of the other ones are. So I hate the UI in this. I don't like the way Apple works. I don't like the way Apple does its gesturing systems. I don't like the way I can't organize apps onto different screens. I don't like the fact that I can install apps and they will all just vomit themselves upon my home screen. I don't want to. There's times I want to go into a launcher and call up an app that I don't want in my way on a regular basis. But that is whatever it is. Overall, this phone is very good if you want account integration and privacy, but do need some Google services. Sure, you can install MicroG onto Lineage, but this has the MicroG and the account syncing services, both to their service and to your own private service, all integrated in, in a single one-stop shop. So if you're looking for those types of things, this phone ROM is definitely a build, especially since we talked a little bit about Graphene OS. Why haven't I experimented with that? Well, they don't make a build for the Nexus 5X, but this one they did. I have four of these phones laying around. It was worth taking one, wiping it, and putting EOS on. Overall, neat experience. Uh, I am gonna keep this build around for a while. It's not gonna be an online carry around phone. It's gonna be an office phone that I use for testing some things though and testing access cloud integrations and things like that. So with that being said though, um, this is definitely a, a good operating system. You should go and have a look at it. So EOS, have a look at the link in the description down below and uh, uh, let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.